What is up my fellow mobile gamers? In today's video, we have the controversial, as always, hero tier list. Subscribe to the channel, thumbs up this video for more amazing mobile gaming content. We are gonna go ahead and we are gonna do our tier list for all of the heroes currently in the game. We're gonna go by factions. So from the Ultramarines all the way down to the newly released Black Templars. Make sure you leave your concerns and complaints down below in the comment section as always. But first, a quick word from our sponsor for this video, LD Player. It is an emulator that lets you play mobile games on your computer. Play Android games on your PC using the LD Player emulator. Smooth gameplay and stable connection with the lowest amount of RAM usage possible. Run multiple accounts at once for MMORPGs. Play two or three different mobile games at the same time. And multiplayer makes re-rolling and gotcha games an absolute breeze. Make sure you go ahead and you download LD Player using my affiliate link down below. All right, my friends, let's try and bang this out and make this quick. I want this to be at least under 10 minutes because there's a lot of heroes to go through. First up, we have our Ultramarines. Um, I, I didn't even take the time to try and figure out how to pronounce these names, so they're going to be butchered. For this tier list, we are going to be ranking them in three different categories. We have A tier, which is like the top tier, the best. We have B tier, which is going to be like average. They're not overpowered, but they're not also underpowered. They're, they're like a solid pick. And then we're going to have C category. C category is kind of like they fall behind and they're not as strong as some of the other characters. Our first hero right here, 100%. I'm putting him in the A category. Next up, we have our Ultramarine Sniper. I don't know if it's a uh, uh, Kirk. Curtis, Curtis, or Curtis? We're gonna put this guy in the B category. He is about average, not overpowered, not underpowered, a solid pick overall for the Ultramarines. Next, we got arguably, I would say, the best Ultramarine hero in this game, uh, Bellator. Has the ability to summon a clone of himself, the more rounds that have passed. And also, this character basically has, I would say, double armor, has this special ability right here. Any incoming damage has to go through armor a second time then we have incessus 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 this is our healer for the ultramarines now healers are really strong in this game however i feel like this is probably the weakest one and out of all the ultramarines um really like it just doesn't bring anything to the table i'm putting them in the c category i think they're actually below average and there's one thing that I want to touch on really quick is this ability right here. There is another hero in this game that has the exact same passive ability, but it's better. It has a higher percentage chance and it will still trigger the resurrection even if overkilled is triggered. So we'll go through that really quick once you see that other hero, but C category for sure. And then finally, for the Ultramarines, we have Kalgar. <clears throat> this is your legendary hero. Despite being a legendary hero, I definitely would not put him in the A category. I would say like a B category. Moving on to the Necrons, we have the Royal Warden guy. Now he can be put in like the C category or the B category. Um, initially, I would put him in the C category because his special ability only works if you have non-character friendly units. However, if you do have stuff like scarabs that were summoned or anything else that has been summoned, then his special ability becomes extremely good. So he's like a hit or miss, depending on the situation. Next we have, I'm just gonna say this name here, the Hexmark Destroyer guy. Definitely a B category. Overall does a ton of damage. Next we got Alpha Null, the Spider guy. 100% A category with the ability to summon two Scarab Swarms. Now what's absolutely insane about this is the Scarab Swarms themselves have the chance to multiply. So it is insane, I'm gonna throw up a clip that I showed everyone during a live stream where I had a ridiculous amount of scarab swarms running around because they just kept multiplying over and over again. This, this was in the game mode onslaught and it was insane. I mean, we had like 20 scarab swarms running around. It was amazing. Next, we got uh, Thutmose, Thutmose, the Plasmancer. This guy kind of really uh, falls off. Um, 
you could potentially put him in the c category but i think he just puts out a decent amount of damage that i would keep him in the b category finally we have the overlord himself definitely 100 percent have to put him in the a category because he has the ability to summon necro warriors and summoners in this game are absolutely ridiculous all right moving on to the black legion we have angrax we're gonna put him in the b category next we have volk another b category not broken but not underperforming then we got archimatos master of possession definitely by far the best black legion hero has the ability to summon blood letters harkeem world claimer herald of the apocalypse 100 b category does some decent damage, has some uh, interesting effects where he can remove armor. Finally, we have a legendary hero, Abandon the Despoiler, War Master of Chaos, another B category. Moving on to the Death Guard. We have legendary hero, Typhus, Herald of the Plague God, another B category. Now, a special ability does some really good AoE damage. So you could argue and say that he could potentially be put in the A category just because of his AOE damage. Next up, we have Maladus, Blight Lord Champion. I put him in the C category. I feel like he's really weak. Like, uh, definitely doesn't bring anything interesting to the table. I feel like out of all the Death Guard heroes, he is probably the weakest. We have the Plague Surgeon and it triggers even if overkilled. So that's why we're putting him in the B category. All right, moving on to the Orcs. Now I'm gonna say that uh, by far the best out of all the factions and you can argue with me. First up, we got Snot Flaga, 100% A category, has the ability to to spawn additional units anytime we have a spawner they are super duper strong next up we got gibba scraps another amazing hero because he has the ability to summon again calls in a tank and the tank goes ahead and it does a bunch of damage immediately the passive ability that all friendly units gain additional armor it's okay um, you know, armor is always good in this game, but like, you know, I wish this would be a bit better, but again, he is a summoner. So hundred percent, we got to put him in the A category. Next, we got snap -a rack -a. This guy, we're going to have to unfortunately put him in the B category, not the best, not the worst. And then finally, we got tank smasher. We're going to put him in the B category. All right, moving on to the adeptas. Arguably, you could put him in the A category or the B category. It's really up to you. Um, this was another one that I kind of struggled with. I really like the special abilities. Next, we have Isabella, 100% A tier. Has the ability to heal herself and all adjacent friendly units revives one random friendly imperial character and up to two random friendly imperial summons so not only are you reviving a hero but also two summons as well i mean come on how can you not put her in the a category she's absolutely insane and her passive ability look at this any adjacent friendly unit that takes damage gets instantly healed this isn't like once per turn you stack everyone around her every time they take damage boom they're getting healed boom they're getting healed boom they're getting healed every time over and over and over again i mean it basically has the potential to nullify the enemy's damage every time moving on we got morvin 100 had to put him in the a category we got Ra Roz with a rose with a definitely a b category finally our legendary hero we have celestian living saint 100 percent a tier absolutely insane passive ability when attacked summons a creature in a free adjacent hex and immediately triggers his passive ability can do this twice per turn that post armor damage is taken as direct damage by the creature that is summoned instead so basically like you know almost making you immune two times the damage really really strong passive ability um, this is arguably one of the hardest heroes in this game to 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 kill like all right, finishing up I know this is a long video. I'm trying to bang through this as fast as possible. This definitely is over 10 minutes We got Astra's we have the Primeris Psyker 100% put him in the B category Then we have the Lord himself uh, Yarrick this is the guy you could get for $4.99 at $5 pack at the beginning when you first start 100% 
a category, an absolutely insane summoner, summons up to four guardsmen, and they immediately start firing and doing damage. Moving on to Cut Skoden, uh, B category, potentially could put him in the C category. Uh, the skills are just really lacking for this hero. Um, the only thing that I kind of like is the frag bomb. Then we have uh, Thaddeus Noble, put him in the B category. And finally, we got uh, Castelline Creed, Lord General of the Astra. We have another summoner, so you know where we're putting him. The A category summons up the two guardsmen and free adjacent hexes. First up, we have Sword Brother Godswell. I would say the C category. The skills on this hero are really weak. Next, we got Brother uh, Bouchard. Put him in the B category. Okay, skills. Next, we have Chapter Ancient. Another character we're going to go ahead and put in the B category. Adjacent friendly units have an added block chance. Block is always really good, so it's an okay special ability. Next, we have Brother Jaeger, 100% the A category. Moving on, we have the High Marshal Hel Helbrinch, Helbrett. High Marshal of the Black Templars, legendary hero. Now his special skills don't actually do like any damage. It's more of like really good support, right? So all friendly units within two hexes, Neil deal plus five and gain pierce. All right, my friends, and that is it. We have finally finished this insane tier list. This took a ridiculous amount of time. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see y'all later. Stay happy, stay safe, my friends. Peace.